initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Willy's Wonderland, a movie heavily inspired by the Five Nights at Freddy's video games, which is a franchise that still sends many children to bed with wet nightmares and haunts the boners of many. Five Nights at Freddy's was a phenomenon, and I believe it still is. Matt Pat of Game Theory has like 600 videos of Five Nights at Freddy lore and hypotheses on the universe. So I mean, it, it's a big deal as far as video games go. And this movie draws a lot of inspiration from it. It features Nicolas Cage locked in a Chuck E. Cheese that's been cursed by a satanic ritual and haunted by animatronics that constantly feed on people. And Nicolas Cage has to clean the place before morning and survive the night. And I have to say, this is Nicolas Cage at his worst, because Nicolas Cage doesn't say a word in this movie. He doesn't have a single line. He only even makes one audible noise, which is when he grunts after taking a drink. And uh, I thought he sharded his pants, which is why he made like this weird groan. But that's the only time you even hear Nicolas Cage's vocal cords even fluctuate a bit. He's got some golden pipes, and I wish they had used them. Uh, but him being a silent protagonist isn't the worst thing in the world because it's a movie that's not trying to be taken seriously I, I'm pretty sure it's very self-aware like there's a fucking character in this movie that every time he's on screen He's chewing on a Slim Jim just suckling on a Slim Jim like it's his mom's titty It's not a movie that's trying to be anything special It's just supposed to be a fun movie, which I think it succeeds at the story doesn't make any sense They don't even try and tie anything together to make it make sense like, Nicolas Cage every hour has to go drink a soda and then play pinball, and that's never really explained. At least I think it's a soda. It could have been beer, but since it's not Budweiser, I, I don't know. I wasn't able to pick up on it right away. It was either beer or soda, but every hour he has to go drink and play some pinball where he just stops everything and goes and does that, and it's never explained why. So he's just a routine fucking pinball wizard that just has to go over there and drink and play pinball every hour. It's just, there's a lot of things in this that just don't make any sense and they don't try to make it make sense. They just wanted a lot of animatronics for Nicolas Cage to beat the fuck out of, which he does. And they do have a lot of that. There's also other characters in this movie, uh, some younger characters that, they, it doesn't seem like the actors really tried. It's like every single one of their lines was their first take, which is, it kind of gives it a certain charm where it's like extremely goofy, like Attaway General, which I didn't mind, but it is like objectively horrible acting, and they make the worst decisions I've ever seen in a movie, which I think is on purpose, because again, the movie's not trying to be taken seriously. But for instance, like there's these two characters, and everyone in this group knows that it's haunted, they 100% know these animatronics are killing people, and they go in anyway, and then the two characters decide to fuck in the birthday room where a lot of kids die, and as they're fucking, they notice one of the animatronics is alive and watching, and they continue to fuck saying they want to give it a good show, and then, spoilers, they do die to that animatronic. He, he wasn't impressed by the show. Like, and these two characters just moments before were saying how they want to get the fuck out because they don't want to die, they don't want to be around those animatronics, and then literally one scene later they're like, let's go fuck in the birthday room. Like, it's crazy. It, the decision making is awful which I think is on purpose. I think the movie was going for cheesy, so bad it's good kind of shit, and usually that doesn't work, but for this movie I think it did because they focused on the best part of it, which is Nicolas Cage just beating the shit out of animatronics, just spreading animatronic cheeks and raw fucking them. Because uh, Nicolas Cage has a huge kill count of animatronics by the end of this movie, and it's all practical effects, so he's just like slapping fucking stuffed animals around, you hear like the little thuds because it's like real stuffed animal shit and animatronics, it's, it's good curb stomping some of them, ripping skulls off, suffocating them with his taint, like, it's, it's good. Like, it's fun. It's a fun, bad movie. It's, and again, it doesn't try to do anything except give you a lot of kills on animatronics to watch and enjoy, because uh, that's really all this movie has to offer. I wish Nicolas Cage talked. I think that really could have brought it up to another level, and having him be silent is a, a bit of a missed opportunity, in my, in my opinion. Or maybe Nicolas Cage only signed on if he didn't have to say a word, couldn't tell you. But I do think him being a silent protagonist for the entire film was a misfire. And it would have been nice if they at least tried to have some story elements and tie everything together, because I definitely think they had ways of doing that. But they just decided not to, which again, is fine. It's not the biggest deal in the world. So I'm just going to plug this into the moist meter. I'm giving Willy's Wonderland a 60%. I enjoyed it. It's by no means a great movie or anything, but it is a fun one just to watch Nicolas Cage go a little wild beating up some demonic animatronics at a Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, what's not to like about that?
Just beating up evil magic animatronics is just fun to watch. It's time we talk about the magical earbuds from Raycon. I've mentioned these multiple times now and again. I will continue to stress how important it is to have yourself a nice quality pair of wireless earbuds when you're working out so you can get those crucial boner jams for those big reps and not have to worry about accidentally slapping your wire and hurting yourself, ripping, a, ripping them out of your ear and just being a nuisance. Raycon sound just as amazing as the other top audio brands, but they're coming in at half the price. Their everyday E25 model is their best one yet with six hours worth of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, I'd highly recommend them. If you're interested in trying Raycon, you can click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order so again if you're interested in raycon wireless earbuds you can click the link below for 15 percent off so that's buyraycon.com slash moist for 15 percent off buyraycon.com slash moist that's it see ya